AM News by Matson and the Adahi Tanu program. Cars Plus, reminding you to put your phone down while driving. Distractions won't get you there. Heads up, Guam. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Now, on primetime, the governor and the congressional delegate met at Adaloop late this afternoon. Also tonight, a six-day drug enforcement training session wrapped up for local and federal authorities. And Guam joins millions across the globe practicing how to drop, cover, and hold in the event of an earthquake. Half a day and good evening. I'm Adriana Cotero. Last week, unleashing frustrations on Facebook to FaceTime. And today at Adaloop, a meeting between Congressman Michael San Nicolas and Governor Lou Leon Guerrero just wrapped up. The meeting comes after tensions between the two centering mostly on Adaloop's efforts to lobby for support of San Nicolas's HR 1365 in Washington, D.C. and the governor's local war claims effort bill 181 which San Nicolas said is jeopardizing passage of his measure. Just last week, the congressman blasted Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio and Adaloop Chief of Staff Tony Babauta for, quote, pretending to do his job while they were in D.C. lobbying for 1365. Right from the start, the congressman was upset about the governor's efforts to continue for her push of her bill. Any comments or feedback in my wanting to continue our uh, relationship in working for the war reparations and making sure that you know, your bill is passed and uh, our bill here is also passed. Well, I mean, so you're still wanting to move forward Bill 181? Absolutely. Yeah, that, then that's, that's a problem, Governor. And I made it very clear that 181 is going to create consternation inside the House and the Senate if we're trying to move a local measure that is going to be sending mixed signals with 1365. Well, you know, I totally uh, don't agree with that. Um, uh, Josh and uh, Tony was over there. They talked to the officials of the uh, Senate, uh, whose oversight of this bill, 1365. And uh, my impression and my information is that uh, it has little impact or minimal risk at all as I see Bill 181 as uh, complementing your work for HR 1365. Bill 181, all it specifically says is that we create a um, an account here and that we create the processes and the procedures that we need to do to work from an administrative uh, uh, perspective to try and start giving out the monies to our war survivors, and so I was—I uh, don't see it at all as conflicting or contrary to HR 1365. I see it as a uh, complementary and a support for 1365. Governor, I very much understand that's how you see it, but that's not how the Senate is seeing it. That's also not the message the Republicans brought back when they went out there and they met with those same officials. Uh, the Republicans even came straight up to me and they said, Congressman, we spoke to the Senate and they said if we move this local measure, it's going to get in the way of 1365. And I said, yeah, I'm not making it up. So I know that you know 181 is something you're very passionate about, but it is going to cause a conflict with the movement in the Senate. So, I mean, that's, that's, so that, that's we, just the reality uh, of the ground. I think we disagree <clears throat> on that and, uh, and we just move on. And uh, I'm happy pursue 181 uh, because I don't agree that it's uh, going to negatively impact your uh, HR 1365 and then on your side you continue on with your HR 1365 and I will continue to support your uh, HR 1365 so I think at the end of the of the day um, we'll both benefit from it and I guess we just Leave it at that and then we move on with what we need to do. The governor said she's made the effort to work together and expects the same from him. San Nicolas, however, continued to oppose her efforts to push through the local bill because of the confusion it will cause in Washington, D.C. with his efforts that he is the congressman. And you can watch our live stream of it on our KUAM News Facebook page.
Senators toured the military's live fire training range with new Joint Region Marianas Head Admiral John Manoni and staff. This marks the first tour since human remains were found at the range and according to Legislative Historic Preservation Chair Senator Therese Herlahi, the bone fragments found on September 26th and October 2nd have been moved to the Marine Corps Activity Guam office in South Vinagayan. Acting Shippo Patrick Luhan did not attend the tour. Terlahi tells KUAM the sites where remains were found are now covered with tarps and are held down by rocks. As we previously reported, the Shippo was awaiting a mitigation plan from the military for the sites where remains were found. Centers also toured the site of the future Marine cantonment named after former Guam delegate Ben Blas. The staging area for the Magua village artifacts was also toured. The ancient Chamorro village has been cleared by the military. Governor Leon Guerrero has signed several more bills into law. They include a measure approving changes to the port modernization plan. It scales back to the proposed port administration building project by renovating the existing building instead of constructing a new one. It saves about $7 million to be used for more wharf repairs. The governor also signed into law a bill that establishes a pilot program in the schools for youth mental health first aid training. Certain school staff will learn about ways to recognize and help prevent youth suicide. Also becoming law was a bill that transfers 1.5 acres of Chamorro Land Trust land to the University of Guam to ensure that a UOG building is located completely within school property. The Guam Housing and Urban Renewal Authority trial continues this afternoon with witness Millie Titano heavily questioned by the defense counsel on the minute recordings, emails, and published meeting documents. The three defendants in the case, former GURA board members David Sablan, Cecile Suda, and Roland Selvage, are accused of holding a private gathering on December 26, 2011 to determine the awardees of a multi-million dollar grant. At the time of the incident, Titano was the executive director's special assistant. Sablan's attorney Samuel Tech asked Ty to know about the Qualified Allocation Plan, or QAP. Okay, so it started as a whole chain. Do you see the email that uh, states uh, Saturday, December 24th, 12.34 uh, p.m., correct? Yes. And it says, uh, Commissioners, attached for your use is the QAP. See you, all on, see you all on Monday, December 26th at 9. The doors will be locked, so please call me when you arrive. Correct. Okay, and then up there on attachments, right below meetings, it says 2011 QAP application dot PDF. Correct? Yes. Okay, so is that the QAP that you sent to the board for their use? Yes. Titano said she recalls seeing an email from the GURA chair, David Sablan, to the executive director, Marcel Camacho, to coordinate this meeting. Titano testified that she stayed outside and was there for an assist, any assistance during the meeting. No. There, and no. there was no attendance required for this, right? Correct. There was no quorum required, right? No. In this agency, there are seven members, and in order for it to be a legal meeting, 15% plus one member or four members total must be present to constitute a quorum. Titano said that was not a requirement for that session. Trial resumes tomorrow afternoon. Take Care Insurance continues its legal challenge against the new GovGuam health insurance contract. The company is seeking a temporary restraining order and enforcement of an automatic stay that would put a halt to the current contract with Aetna International. In arguments before presiding Superior Court Judge Alberto Lamarena, Take Care attorney Louis Yanza said the health insurer was wrongfully disqualified as a bidder and that it protest with the OPA was timely, was timely. Assistant Attorney General Joseph Perez Representing the Department of Administration argued Take Care was, quote, never disqualified because they never bid. He says GovGuam never received a proposal from the company for the health insurance RFP. GovGuam announced earlier this month that Aetna was the winning bidder, and open enrollment is underway. Judge Lamarana confirmed, though, that the contract has not yet been signed by the governor. He has taken the matter under advisement. Combating meth on Guam, it's been a battle for the island authorities for island authorities as the drug use has become more and more prevalent. In light of this, local and federal law authorities underwent a six-day drug enforcement training. Here's more. The difference here is your border surrounds your island. You're an island and it comes from everywhere. Explaining the unique challenge Guam faces in the war against drug trafficking, Plano, Texas Police Department officer with the Professional Law Enforcement Training Program, Sergeant John Britton, is on island to help local and federal authorities in this fight. Sergeant Britton has nearly 30 years of experience with drug interdiction, and he said where he works in Texas, the illegal narcotics come from across the border, whereas here... It comes from a different area, the Philippines, China, those places, and they'll mail it in. 
Um, or it's coming to mailboxes and as addressed to one person, right, but it's really being distributed throughout. The main drug at Guam's forefront, ICE. It's become an epidemic as KUAM has reported on numerous incidents of the substance being mailed in. It's very um, difficult to intercept it when it's coming because it's coming through in legal means sometimes and concealed in products that are brought in. Sergeant Britton led a six-day training for local and federal law enforcement on how to detect where the deception lies and how to distinguish the truth. And he said it's not just a duty for the authorities. The biggest thing that we can do and what we had learned was engaging our community. The press is that it's awesome. Y'all do the same job that we want to do all the time. You inform the public, and an informed public is a public who can help us, right, and, and gain that partnership that we need with the different villages and communities to be able to give us the information we need as law enforcement to go out and confront. In addition, that confrontation starts from education where you're educating your youth at an early age on the dangers, making poor choices, right? That's the most difficult thing to do is because it's become accepted within the family household, some, not all, but it's an accepted practice, they fall into that same endless pit of poor decisions. Once these poor choices are made, it changes people. And Sergeant Burton says then it becomes not just the user's problem, but the whole community's. This training was made possible through funding from the Guam Police Department. This is an important training because um, our patrol officers, our first responders who make the initial contact, it really builds the case to really address the epi epidemic in which we're facing. And of course, we all know that crystal methamphetamine is the prevalent choice of, of the island. Reporting for Guam. Two dogs were found severely beaten with a hammer last night in Jigo, possibly connected to a family violence incident. The animals were barely alive this morning, their bodies hidden among piles of trash, according to Guam Animals in Need President Cyrus Lur. Gain employees responded to reports of crying injured dogs at a home that police were also called to. Lur says one of the dogs died shortly after it was found, while the other was rushed to a nearby veterinary clinic. The animal had to be euthanized, though, because of an extreme brain damage. He says both appeared to have been well-fed, domesticated pets of medium size. Lur says an individual was apprehended at the scene and was treated for injuries. Police are investigating. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Yo, Jay, uh, you sure you want to be washing your car right now, man? Not now, Kim. I'm washing Betsy. And she has to be spotless, bro. Clouds are coming in fast. It looks fine to me. Look again. It looks fine, Kevin. It looks fine. You know what makes more sense than Guam's weather? Using your Bank of Guam credit card at any Shell station to save 6% on gas purchases. Call, click, or visit for more details. Make more sense. Bank of Guam, the people's bank. Member FDIC. At the mall, as you enjoy your shopping, dining, or entertainment, you could also win three great cars from Atkins Kroll and thousands of prizes in Micronesia Mall's Cars, Prizes, and Getaways game. Present your mall receipts and have a chance to win the renowned performance Chevrolet Camaro, the unapologetic rugged Toyota 4Runner, or the head-turning Lexus ES350 Luxury. Getaways to Manila, courtesy of Philippine Airlines, plus prizes from Foot Locker and Burger King. The more you shop, the more chance to win in Micronesia Mall's Cars, Prizes, and Getaways game. Of the day, I'm in the club. Half a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half a day, I'm in the club. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. The circus is coming. The Super American Circus is coming to Guam. UOG Calvo Fieldhouse, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, November 8th, 9th, and 10th. Starring Guinness World Record holder Blake Walenda, the greatest high wire walker on the planet. The incredible Mario Espana on the Wheel of Danger. Aerialist, 
Balancer, Juggler, Dancer, Fiery, Acrobat, Hilarious Clowns, and Stars from America's Got Talent. Witness Superheroes Live, an amazing cast of performers from around the world. Come on, come all to the Super American Circus. Three days only, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, November 8th, 9th, and 10th. To purchase tickets, visit SuperAmericanCircus.com and like our Facebook page for a chance to win tickets. Special thanks to Burger King. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. For the 2020 election, the Guam Election Commission, in conjunction with the Division of Motor Vehicles, GEC has implemented the Motor Voter Registration. GEC Executive Director Maria Pangalinen says as voter information gets updated, it will lead to changes. Over 400 letters were sent out transferring people from one voting district to another because of their new home address. Since next year is a mayoral election year, GEC looks to the motor voter program to reconcile voter roles, since out-of-district voting can affect mayoral races. Pangalinen tells KUAM News voters who receive notification are already good to go for the 2020 elections. Based on the motor voter section, of the of the application form so if these people show up where they used to vote what's going to happen um they would be they would be asked to go to their um to their correct voting district pang and Lenin says the over 400 letters sent out were for august motor voter registrations she expects more letters to be sent out as the GEC works to reconcile motor voter filings on a monthly basis Many believe the land and culture are inextricably linked in Guam, and four new appointees to four different boards that deal with land and or culture appeared for their confirmation hearings today. Vincent Leon Guerrero was nominated to the Historic Preservation Review Board. Angela Camacho was nominated to Ancestral Lands Commission. Joseph Cruz was nominated to the Chamorro Land Trust Commission, and Arthur Chan was nominated for the Guam Land Use Commission. He was asked by Committee Chair Therese Terlahi how he would balance competing needs when it came to rezoning. <laughs> I think that this commission has actually extreme pressures for, from development because this, they have to go through the Guam Land Use Commission and, and so I just want to know how you would handle a situation like that. With the responsibility that the governor has uh, given me in terms of my integrity and honesty, I think that would be the first concern that I would have. And given that, I think uh, friendship is just secondary. Chan is a longtime manager of Hawaiian Rock Corporation. And the 8th Annual Western Pacific Islands Association of Fire Chiefs Training Forum kicked off today. Joan Ogden Charferas had the opportunity to talk with its two keynote speakers. Fire Chiefs Gary Ludwig and Jeff Tucker are on island as part of the 2019 Western Pacific Islands Association of Fire Chiefs Training Forum. Chief Ludwig is president of the International Association of Fire Chiefs and has over four decades of experience in fire, EMS, and rescue. He currently is a fire chief in Champaign, Illinois. The fire service is what we call all hazards, so we handle everything. So when we talk, we're going to be talking about, you name it, from fire suppression to EMS to hazmat to emergency management to the cancers that are impacting our firefighters, cardiovascular disease. There's a whole range of issues that we're here to discuss over these two days. And so we hope to share information, learn about best practices, and see what we can do about helping each other out. The two-day forum is being held at the Loti Hotel in Tumon. It's being attended by fire and emergency personnel from local, federal, and military agencies. Prior to the forum, the visiting chiefs were able to take a tour of some of the fire stations on Wednesday. Chief Tucker is fire chief for Kenai Fire Department in Alaska and has been for the last six years. What's the best thing about doing my job and you know, being president of the Western Fire Chiefs is visiting uh, other state associations and learning. I learn more from them than I think they'll learn from me just being able to go out and uh, you know, visit the stations, meet with the people and uh, talk fire, you know, talk shop with folks. And so, you know, seeing, the, seeing the, you know, how they uh, use their resources and the challenges they face and how they, you know, have the opportunities to, 
to do the job they do. So it's exciting to come out and visit uh, you know, the different areas across the United States. According to Guam Fire Department Deputy Fire Chief Joey Sinicholas, who is the current president of the Western Pacific Division, this year focuses on the issue of cancer prevention and PTSD in firefighters. Recognizing the signs and, and learning about what we need to do about it and, and how we can address it uh, to the best of our resources. At 10.17 a.m., those in attendance took part in the Great Guam Shakeout, and a presentation was made to the Foster Families Association by this year's Fire Prevention Week Committee. The forum wraps up Friday with a series of discussions and presentations. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharfras. It doesn't matter where you are or live in the world, at any given moment an earthquake can happen. And every year Guam Homeland Security and the Office of Civil Defense encourage the island community to participate in a worldwide campaign to spread, spread awareness about what to do when a tremor strikes. Sabrina Salas Montanani reports on the Great Guam Shakeout Earthquake Drill. Guam school children ready to go. This past week we were doing the drop cover hold drill throughout the day um, at different times just so they, they kind of got the feeling of um, it coming as a surprise. And at 1017 Thursday morning, it was go time. You drop to the ground now. If you're standing during the earthquake, the ground's like shake strongly. Like throw you down. Take cover if there's something sturdy to protect yourself from objects being hurled across the room. And it wasn't just here at Aganya Heights Elementary School where the Great Guam Shakeout got underway. From the Western Pacific Islands Association of Fire Chiefs Annual Forum to Adeloup with Governor Lulian Guerrero dropping, covering and holding on to Guam's National Guard's men and women participating in the earthquake drill in the office and out in the field. Team KUAM also joined in streaming live on Facebook. Good morning everybody watching us on Facebook Live right now. Jason Stiles with KUAM News and today is a very special day. It is October 17th. Now that is the great Guam shakeout. We've done this for several years with our friends over at the Office of Civil Defense and Homeland Security at 10 at 17 exactly. I'm looking at my watch right now and about 65 seconds from now everybody is going to do the three things that you need to do to participate in the great Guam shakeout. Drop, cover and hold. Almost 50,000 people locally registered to participate while more than 65.5 million registered for the great shakeout worldwide. Just remember the next time there's an earthquake, drop, cover and hold on. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matt Tanani. Don't go away, Dave Delgado is next with sports. What's that? An offer insurance customer needs a claim settled immediately? I'm on it. Agent Alpha. In the event of an accident, theft, or breakdown, each of our Alpha Insurer agents are trained to go above and beyond. This is my stop. There she is. Target acquired. Agent Alpha. Yes! Now there's a technology that's lighting the way to a new mortgage for people all across Guam. Introducing Simplify Mortgage by Bank of Hawaii, Hawaii's leading lender. Simplify Mortgage by Bank of Hawaii lets you apply for a home loan anytime from any device, making the mortgage and refi process faster and easier. Or work hand in hand with one of our residential loan experts. So put the power of choice and control in your hands. Simplify Mortgage by Bank of Hawaii. Welcome to tomorrow. Okay. Can you? Can I meet Alan, please? Attention passengers of flight AJ3004. Your flight has been delayed. Oh. Woo! It's the flavor that makes you go woo. McDonald's new spicy barbecue glazed tenders and chicken sandwich. Made with tender, juicy, all-white meat chicken. Available in four, six, or ten-piece chicken tenders. Try the spicy barbecue crispy chicken sandwich, too. Half a day, hungry drivers. Are you spending more time on the road? Shell has teamed up with Wendy's so you can buy fuel and eat free. Just fuel up seven gallons at any Shell station and get a coupon for a Wendy's cheeseburger or chicken nuggets. Or use two coupons to redeem a Wendy's cheeseburger meal with fries and a drink. Fuel up at Shell today because this deal won't last long. Quality service, fuel and food from Shell and Wendy's. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J.
What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. On the way, some information on the Guam Reef Hotel's 2K and 5K runoffs. So have some bodybuilding news on this weekend. Show that all coming up. But first off, some high school football news for you. Check it out. The IIAAG High School football semifinals are set. Tomorrow, the undefeated Father Duenas Friars face the Simon Sanchez Sharks at 7 p.m. at the GW Field. All-Island Offensive MVP Kian Artero will look to lead the Friars offense. Defensively, the Sharks will look to dual-threat quarterback Jaten Penaflor, who is the starting quarterback and safety for the Sharks. On Saturday, Guam High will face GW at GW. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. The Guam Reef Hotel's 13th annual 2K 5K run, Walk to Wishes to benefit the Make-A-Wish Guam and CNMI, will be held on October 27th. $300 to the school with the most participants, 50 students or more. $200 for the school with 49 and below with no less than 20 students. Make sure to include the name of the school on the registration form. Register at Hornet Sports and the Guam Reef Hotel's front desk. The fee is $10 per person or $15 on race day. Showtime 5 in the morning with go time set for 6. For more info, you can call 644-3138. Turning over to some fitness news, let's meet one of this year's bodybuilders stepping onto the stage in this weekend's Michelob Ultra Guam National Bodybuilding Championships on Saturday at the Sheraton Laguna Guam Resort. Hafiday Guam, my name is Travis Wolford. I'm from the village of Tumuni and I'll be competing in the men's bodybuilding division. Well, I've been uh, three months out, we have been prepping. I've been focusing mainly on diet and my posing routines. And so this will be my first bodybuilding show competing. Uh, the reason why I wanted to do it is because, you know, it's been a long time coming. I've been wanting to do it for the longest time. My brother actually competed three years, in, you know, three years. He's actually the champ from last year uh, for men's classic physique. So it really pushed me to to try and do my best for this year. It's a benefit, you know, my brother being the, the champ from last year, and we, you know, we stay together, so it's, it's very motivating uh, for him to be by my side while uh, prepping for this show. Your body has to be symmetrical, uh, very proportioned. You know, you can't just leave one muscle out. You gotta train, train it all, and train hard. You know, just keep pushing yourself. But the main goal is just to bring, you know, everything that I got to show, showcase, you know, that I can do it and, you know, and bring the best out of me. In the Triton Men's Basketball League, four stars beat Wu-Tang 89-78. Billy Belgium put up 37 points in the win as four stars improved to 1-1. One one. With the loss, Wu-Tang falls to 0-2. Action Yashi added 13 points and Curtis Silva put up 10 for the stars. Julian Stewart scored 20 for Wu-Tang. On Monday, Team Gatorade and the FSEG All-Stars open their Triton Men's Basketball League at 625, while the UOG Tritons play their second game of the league against four stars at 830. All games are played at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse, and admission is free. Mark is the best husband and father you could ask for. Right, Yamur? My brother, he's just a big kid. Great guy. Best man at my wedding. Just gotta keep him off the dance floor. Uncle Mark's the best. He taught me how to seal a base. He stopped by yesterday just to chat. Honestly, this place would fall apart without him. We wouldn't have gotten four without you. Because we do everything for you. For all the conversations. For all the likes and shares. For all the fun and laughter. For always choosing us to provide you with the connections that you value the most. Thank you for making Docomo Pacific your most loved network four years in a row. Viva!
MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. Hey guys, you know what's even cooler than when we have a jam packed Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club? When you are the only one, you've got the entire spotlight to yourself. So, based on that, we say happy birthday to Steffi Cordero, who celebrates the 30th birthday. Happy Dirty 30, Steffi. Love Lil, Kilo, and the entire family, and all your friends here at KUAM and at Coldstone Creamery. Remember, you can be part of the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KOAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birthday. That's going to do it for us here on the news desk, but stay tuned. Bree is next with In the Mix. In the Mix is presented by Eat Street Grill. Visit Eat Street Grill at the Plaza Shopping Center in the heart of Tucson.